Welcome to Com Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter. Well, we're going to take a look, another look at measurement system analysis. I'm going to take a look at a case study, but in particular, we are going to do MSA. So we're going to take a look at MSA for high precision high precision processes okay so I've recently been doing some work with a company in the United States they have to do um, some work for one of their clients so they've got a uh, got some new work they're working directly with a uh, with a company and as part of the uh, new product introduction they've asked them to do an MSA and this is a high precision part that they are that they are measuring um, something that they've never done before and as we were doing the analysis I was having to explain what MSA was of course I was having to explain what the rules were in terms of when you do the diagnostic what's the pass and the fail rules and what we were finding was because this was such a high precision process we simply weren't passing the normal rules and it makes it look like the measurement system is very very poor when in point of fact in a high precision situation it's very difficult to pass the normal rules so this is about using your common sense when you're doing MSAs and in a high precision situation you've got to think differently so we've got the MSA results which we're going to take a look at then we're going to explain, I'm going to explain what the results mean and why we're not going to use the normal rules and why this measurement system actually is, is pretty good, you know, given it, its high precision situation um, and what the advice to the client was, yeah, what should they do to try and make this situation be okay, essentially. So, let's take a look at the MSA. So here's the MSA table, you can see the data, look, we've got three operators, we've got 10 parts, and we measured the part twice, each part has been measured twice. We are measuring in inches, so you can see that some of the measurements, we go down to 10 thousandths of an inch, we go down to 100 thousandths of an inch, and this was the first MSA, three operators. Now, if we take a look at the results, the precision to tolerance and the precision to total, we're looking at precision to tolerance of 0.43. So in other words, 43% of the tolerance that you can see in the boxes there, 43% of that tolerance is being used up by measurement error. And if we look at precision to total, 39% of all the variability that we are seeing is coming from the measurement system. So clearly that doesn't pass the normal rules, which would be 10% in this case. Now if we look down the graphs, let's take a look at the operator by part graph. So you can see that everybody's measuring the parts, they're getting bigger together, they're getting smaller together, so that's okay. Then if we go right to the other end of the, the sets of graphs that I've got from SPC Excel, we get to the range graph at the end. And now this is the difference between the first and second measurement. And you can see, look, that operator one, whilst he's not bad, he's definitely worse than the other two operators. And one of the things the client has said is he thinks that this person just needs a little bit more training on some of the calibration rules and things like that. So we identified that as one of the actions that he will take. He will work on that operator to remove some of that error. But if you look back at the table, the error that they're making is actually tiny. You know, you can see, look, each number, it says 0.223. And then the error comes in the, in the next digit. So in other words, the error is by one ten thousandth of an inch. So you can see 2236, 2237. So just one ten thousandth of an inch. Or in some cases, 
half that because you can see that the error is in the next digit over. So we're talking hundred thousandths of an inch in this measurement error. So the amount of error that's actually being made is actually tiny. So anyway, obviously we're gonna work on operator one. But one of the things I wanted to do was to say, well, if we improved operator one and we made him as good as uh, operators two and three, would we be getting a much better result? So what I did look, I just copy and pasted operator two and three's results into another file. You can see that file here. So now I've got another template and I've done another MSA, but this time I've excluded the operator that was making more of the error. So in other words, we are assuming that that operator improves with training. So now what happens? Do we get, do we get better? Do we get much better? So look, now we've got precision to tolerance of 0.36. We've got precision to total of 0.35. So still, based on our rules, this would be a failing measurement system. Let's go back to the whiteboard and let's talk about what we are actually seeing in a high precision environment and whether what we are seeing is actually a poor measurement system or not. So, okay, let's think about what's going on. Essentially with MSA, you have the underlying process, the variability from the manufacturing process itself, and then of course the measurement error adds variability on top of that. So the measurement error always makes the distribution look bigger. And then when we work out the statistics, precision to total, for example, what's precision to total? Well, what it does is it looks at how big this is. It looks at how wide that is. And it divides that error into the total. It's a ratio. So because we've got a precision to total of 0.35 here, it's saying that 35% of all the variability we are seeing is measurement error. But think about that. All that is, it is one ten thousandth of an inch. That's the size of the error they are making because we are inflating this variability by that much. But think how variable the parts are. The parts are only varying by two ten thousandths of an inch. So because we are doing a ratio of precision to the tolerance of the parts, precision to the total variability of the parts rather, precision to total, the total variability is so tiny, any error that you get here it can only be big. It can only look like it's a poor measuring system. Now, not this client, but I've had other clients where they've done the precision to tolerance calculations, they've done the MSA, and they've come back to me and they've said, we're rubbish at measuring, aren't we? And I've said, no, you're brilliant at measuring. To be out by just one ten thousandth of an inch, is actually a brilliant result. Many, many companies can't get anywhere near this level of accuracy in a measurement system. Your problem is the fact that you're making something that is almost identical. Your parts are almost as identical as one another. So there's very little total variability. And so when we compare the error that you make to the variability in the parts, it's always going to look large. So although what we've got is a precision to total, and this might be the best that these guys achieve, the precision to total is, what is it, O, O35-6. That might be the best that they're gonna do. And now that doesn't pass our normal, that doesn't pass our normal rules. But actually, I'm saying to this guy, you've, you've got a great measuring system. This, this wouldn't be an indication of a problem to me. Now there is a slight problem and we need to look at another diagram on the MSA that's been done. So if we go back to the, if we go back to the Excel pages, 
Let's take a look at the misclassification graph. So you can see the misclassification graph here. And it says that the misclassification misclassification rate is 309,000 in a million. In other words, almost 31% of the parts almost 31% of the parts could be misclassified. Now this is the other piece of advice I've given him. So yes, train operator one. We need to sort that out. That's the piece of advice. But the other piece of advice, look, the distribution is off center. So what you've got is the, the distribution of results is slightly off center. So you're getting very close to the lower specification. Now for some reason, the machinist is deciding to make the part um, slightly low on the scale. And, and we've talked about this, about essentially moving the center. And because you're slightly low, if you get error here, if you get a, a, a one ten thousandth error in either direction here, potentially what's going to happen, you're going to misclassify. You're going to think a good one is actually a reject, or you're going to take a rejectable item, and of course, you're going to make it a good one. And that is the misclassification risk. Now, that misclassification risk is amplified by the fact that you are sitting to the left inside the tolerance. So in this case, if we get the machinist to move the process and center it, so that what we end up with is a set of results equidistant from the tolerance. Now, when we get the misclassification, we get the, the error on the measurement system. What we don't do is we don't take it from inside to outside the tolerance that will dramatically reduce the risk of misclassifying. If this measurement system is capable of seeing that accuracy and it has a very low misclassification risk, it is a perfectly good measuring system because what this person is frightened of, of course, is getting parts out here and delivering them to the customer. Is this measurement system capable of spotting that error before they send mistakes to the customer? You bet. So actually, despite the fact we are in a high precision situation, despite the fact that this measurement system doesn't pass the normal rules of MSA, this is a perfectly good measurement system. These numbers are really tough to improve when you are literally measuring no variability at all. That is MSA in a high precision environment.